just the other day dropped off an e-waste at my shop is this little uh, TIAC clock radio. I don't think it's overly old. It might be four or five years, might be older than that, but it seems to be in pretty good condition and I couldn't see any obvious reasons why it was being thrown out. So I plugged it in, the clock works, but the radio doesn't. So let's see if we can get it sorted out. Hey guys, Chris and the Ultimate Recycler. This is almost a series on can we fix something without knowing how to fix it and we'll just work it out as we go. So come along for a bit of a journey. We'll see if we can sort out why the radio isn't going. So I've just plugged in and as you can see the clock is working fine. In fact it's strobing through the camera so you'll see it flashing. It's actually stable numbers. Uh, it's just the camera. Uh, what the cameras do sometimes when looking at digital screens. Uh, so it seems to work fine. I have been able to set the clock uh, and that's all good. Let's turn it to radio. Uh, there's our volume that side. So our volume is flat out. It's on FM. That's our tuning. And I think our radio is on. Yes, it's on. So if we tune it, I don't know if you can hear that. It's not even static. It's just a bit of a crackle. Now I'm going right through the full range of the tuning from one end to the other. And there's no shine of, sign of any stations. There's no hiss that you normally get on FM. If we go to AM, we have exactly the same. Sorry, that strobe's probably driving you crazy. So there's an issue with the radio. I don't know what's going on. Let's open it up and see if we can sort something out. Okay, we've powered the radio down. I've unplugged it. And we, it looks like we've got some screws underneath. It also has a battery, I guess that's for backup of your clock. So it takes a nine volt battery. At least there's been no old battery left in there. So I've got three screws. There's probably one under the TX sticker so that they know if anyone's fiddled with it, if you take it back for warranty. Well, that's not gonna happen. So we might as well fiddle with it. So I'll pull these screws out. Looks like the whole base cover comes off. So that's gonna make access fairly easy. I don't know what to expect. Um, it's obviously a fault uh, somewhere on the circuit board, I would imagine. Uh, possibly a dodgy capacitor or a bad solder joint. They seem to be the most two, sorry, the most common two issues with modern electronics. So we'll get these screws out. And yep, there, sure enough, there's a screw under the sticker. At least there's no security screws in this. But that wouldn't stop us anyway. Alright, what part comes off? Okay, the whole top, co top cover comes off. And we have a big ribbon cable to the display and the speaker's mounted in the back. The speaker unplugs, that's good. Let's get that plug out of there. That's convenient. Alright, so now we get a good view at the insides. There's actually not many components. We have three chips, a few capacitors that don't appear to be bulged. That's the first thing I'm looking for. Um, a little coil antenna for our AM radio. And there was a wire that hangs out the back for the FM. So everything's going to be right to the ribbon cable here because our display is fine for the clock. Uh, and all the switches did work fine when I did set the clock, so they're okay. Something in this radio circuitry. So, transformer is going to be alright. We had good power to the clock. I think we're going to have to take the circuit board out and have a look on the other side. So, we've got some more plugs here, which is handy. That's our negative from the battery. And we have a positive and negative here from our battery box as well. Uh, and we have a plug here from the transformer and they've sealed it down with a bit of hot glue let's just peel that off I don't think that'll matter so it's pretty easy to work on as far as getting into which is good another screw under here that's all just two screws by the looks of it but this ribbon cable is going to be a bit of a problem Oh, there we go. 
Okay, there's our circuit board for the the unit. Uh, that's our tuning. Let's take that off so that we can see more of the board. Okay, it just fits on a double D. That's fine. Okay, I can't see anything obviously wrong. There's been no corrosion. There's been no there's no scorch marks. I'm thinking we may though have a bad capacitor or something. The top of that chip must have wax on it. Looks looks like it was cracked, but it's actually just got a coating of wax. Maybe it's hot glue. Uh, I think that's going to be alright. Some of the circuitry, of course, is for the clock. And we're only interested in the part that affects the radio. I've just had a really good look over this. I can't see anything actually wrong other than there is a wire here. Now let's see if we can show you guys without things going blurry. Uh, there's a little wire here under the end of this pointer that comes through from the antenna coil. And then there's another one here that's actually broken. So it's a purpley coloured outer sheath. And then the fine wire goes across and it's actually broken. I don't think that will be affecting the radio problem we've got because I think that's only on AM. That's that that uh, antenna coil there. Because the FM antenna should be that other wire. So I don't think this little wire from here is going to affect FM. So... I suspect we have some other problem, but I can't see anything obviously wrong. Some of the solder joints do look like they might be dodgy, but it's really hard to tell. Uh, so I might power it back up while it's apart and just poke around a bit and see if we can get any, uh, any burst of radio life that might indicate a bad contact somewhere. But I should also check the capacitors while I've got it apart. Uh, they don't obviously look damaged, but... Um, we might just try and check them with the ESR meter and see what we have. So I've been fiddling around for you for a little while. I have resoldered that fine wire there, the antenna wire. But something I noticed in this area is the switch. If we can see that, this switch, I think it's the AM-FM switch, is all kinked sideways. The terminals are on a bit of an angle. The square... Um, boxing of the actual switch case is sort of skewed to one side so I expect the thing may have been dropped uh, possibly uh, when the alarm went off one morning and someone wasn't happy with it and they gave it a thump or it flew across the room the switch may have kicked sideways and we might not have proper connections I have just resoldered the connections to the board they looked okay but there may be an issue within the switch I might try and just gently get some pliers on there and see if I can straighten it. Uh, this button should come off. Yep. And it may have an internal problem that we can't fix. But I think if I straighten it a bit, at least it'll look better. Of course, it's possible that it might have been assembled that way and it needed to be kinked to fit through the casing which you wouldn't imagine but you never know that's sort of squared it up a little bit it seems to operate fine but it's quite possible that it wasn't making a connection inside I could guess I could just test the test the leads with the ohms meter and make sure it actually is connecting but we might power it up now that I've resoldered that and I did resolder a couple of connections around the tuning capacitor that I thought looked a little dodgy I don't know but I've resoldered those we've straightened that up let's power it up again and just see if we've made any improvement I think I might just before we put it together I think I might just check this switch now to make sure it is doing I should have checked it beforehand but we'll make sure it's doing the right thing and we've got an on diode check so the first thing we want to make sure is that there's no connection between the case and each terminal and there's not there, there's not there, and there's not there. And if we touch the other end of the case, we're good. Right, so I think the switch is down at the moment. So I'm assuming it connects the centre pin to this end pin. Yep, there we go. 
and it shouldn't connect to the other pin. No. So if we turn the switch the other way, and we connect the center pin to the top pin, that's working, and it doesn't connect to the bottom. Okay, that switch is good now. I should have checked it before, but certainly it could well have been a problem. So let's reassemble the radio and see if we have some noise. Okay, we'll put this back together really quickly, just as a check. I'm not sure where I'll go from here if this doesn't work. All right, we need our mains AC in and our antenna and our speaker, which I wish they had made the speaker wires a bit longer. We don't need to worry about the battery plug at this stage. The fingers are too big to get in there. Okay, so we have speaker, we have antenna, we have power. Um, we've still got our dial thing off, but we'll just power that up now and see if we have any noise out of the speaker. Oh, that's sounding better. Uh, our volume's still up high, but that sounds more like a radio hiss. So let's see if we can get to the tuner. I think we're still on AM, I'm not sure, uh, FM, I'm not sure. Actually, I don't know, because that was a switch we were fiddling with. But that's sounding much more alive. Let's turn it right over. And put the tuning dial back on for the moment, so we can turn it. Being careful not to touch the circuit board. Ah. We seem to have stations. That's AM. And there's not very much on AM around here at the moment, so we should be able to flick it to FM. Oh, was that it? Well, we have stations now. That switch isn't doing anything. I don't know why we're not switching from AM into FM. So we have AM radio there, but we have no FM. I have to sort that one out. Okay, guys, back to this radio tonight. I have uh, I was very puzzled by the fact that I couldn't switch back to FM. So I removed the switch from the circuit board, and I've straightened the pins up because it was quite... Um, kicked across to one side from some sort of impact but when I took the switch off the solder pads and we'll see if we can get a close up here the solder pads where the switch goes up here uh, three four of them actually the three contact pads and one of the ones where the tab from the casing goes through uh, all came off with the switch so the impact must have broken the copper tracks and the pads just lifted straight off basically when I unsoldered it. So I'm expecting that the switch wasn't doing anything because the contacts weren't uh, connecting with the copper traces. I don't really understand how these circuits work, but by tracing the tracks back, the end pad here goes nowhere, as does the one the other end, which is still okay to solder to. Uh, this contact, this end, actually doesn't go anywhere. It's basically a blank contact. The middle one traces back through the circuitry, and the one this end traces back this way. Now, that's the FM setting. What I'm thinking is that when the switch is switched to the AM setting, it's essentially disconnected from the circuit, so the circuit must be automatically in AM, and when you switch it across to this end, it brings another part of the circuit together, it must somehow disconnect AM and play FM. That's what it, I, I can't see how else it's going to work. It doesn't really matter how it's going to work. I think this is why it wasn't working properly. Now, the problem we've got now is that I can't solder the switch to anything. Uh, but it actually goes in from this side, so I can push it straight in there. But I can run some fine wire. I've got some fine wire here. So I can actually run some wire off the switch terminals back to a convenient place in the circuit 
as long as we don't get in the road of our uh, tuning dial it has to turn uh, so I'm thinking I'll just physically wire the terminals that I need to and as far as mounting goes well the one this ends okay the one the other end I've got nothing to solder to it's not going to hold I'm thinking I might just put a little bit of hot glue one end I mean let's face it an AM FM switch really doesn't get used very much most people leave their radio on the one station all the time uh, but I think if we get some hot glue one end, I can solder the other end, run some wires for the middle terminals, we should be able to fix the problem. So I'll get to that, and we'll see if it's going to work. And there's a close-up of my repairs, a bit of hot glue on this end of the switch, and the wires are uh, attached to the appropriate parts of the circuit where the traces went to, uh, so I think that should be fine. Let's uh, power it up and see what happens. Okay, let's power the unit up. And straight away we have static. I think we're on AM here. The volume's not flat out, so we have plenty of volume. Uh, let's switch to FM. There we go. There's that wonderful FM hiss. Excellent. And we'll just see if we can tune into a, a station. Hopefully we don't get music. And there we go, music straight off. And there we go. And it sounds a lot better when we lift the speaker up off the bench. So that's working very well. So I'm happily going to put it back together now. Uh, we'll make sure everything's neat and I think I'll put a bit of hot glue on those other power wires that we had to pry off earlier but very happy with that fix and I think that's going to last very well and here we have the radio working beautifully uh, quite a lot of stations on FM and not bad really reception for a little bit of wire as the antenna so I was listening to a few different ones before but most of them are playing music so we won't dilly dally around there but it's working brilliantly, and if we switch it to AM, we again have pretty good reception on the AM as well. Not bad for in this shed, anyway. There we go. So a successful repair, even though I didn't really know what I was doing at the start, and we fumbled through, was very confused with our switch, because on the terminals it tested fine, and yet obviously the terminals weren't connecting to the circuit board. So the radio actually had two faults. It had that little wire off on the AMN antenna. Had that wire been okay, we would have had AM on the AM and the FM setting, which would have confused me right from the start. I would have blamed the switch, and as it turned out, it kind of was a switch. But uh, two faults, from probably from the, the same act of trauma, when it was either dropped or thrown, it's dislodged that little fine wire from the AM antenna and it's also caused damage to the switch. So managed to fix them both. Pretty happy with that. Probably not economical. Secondhand, this little clock radio is probably only going to sell for $15 or so anyway. Um, you can still buy these, I think. And I think they're around about uh, $40, $50, something like that, to buy new uh, or similar ones that I saw anyway. So anyway, I'm happy to fix it. We've saved it from having been thrown into the waste stream it will now go back and live a longer life. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.